Hey everyone, I wanted to make a quick video about this nifty battery from Lightsaber Optics that I bought at work for backing up one of our wireless ISP sites. Lightsaber Optics is the house brand of ISPsupplies.com, which is a supplier of things used by internet service providers, mostly wireless and fiber. These 48 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries have a 100 amp hour capacity, which is pretty standard for these batteries that fit into a 19 inch rack. What isn't normal is that these batteries have built in heaters to allow for charging and freezing temperatures. But even this is something that you can get on some other brands like Trophy, which I've had a good experience with after deploying them at a critical microwave backhaul site to get a couple days of runtime. What I haven't seen on other brands is the built-in network monitoring. These lightsaber batteries can connect to a network and be accessed using a web browser or by using regular SNMP. The best I've seen elsewhere is local Bluetooth access, but that doesn't do me much good when I'm a few hours drive away from where they're being installed. The documentation for these isn't amazing, so I just wanted to quickly cover the software. Firstly, you want to download the right utility. The Lightsaber SNMP BMS Tools link on the product page will work with the RS-232 port to monitor and configure the battery, while the Lightsaber Battery Modbus software will only work on the RS-485 ports and the appropriate RS-485 adapter. The RS-232 cable is the only way to configure the network access part of the battery. The slightly annoying part is that the RS-232 port is a 6-pin RJ12 connector. I'd expect most people at internet service providers that are buying these batteries have some amount of RJ11 and RJ45 connectors or cables kicking around, but RJ12 is a bit less common these days. I had some RJ12 connectors kicking around since we do need them for the old Motorola canopy equipment. So I ended up making a cable using this DB9 adapter with screw terminals. Pin 5, ground, went to pin 6 on the RJ12, pin 2, RX, went to pin 3, and pin 3, TX, went to pin 4. I was able to use a regular RS-232 serial to USB cable to connect it to my Windows 11 laptop. I opened the PBMS Tools v2.5 software, which automatically goes through your available serial ports and tries to find the battery. The home page will show the real-time stats, and the other tabs will have the other settings. If I power up my 48 volt power supply, we can see the charging status and AC in sections light up. And we'll also see the pack voltage and current increase to show the charging. To configure network access, we'll open the SNMP Tools application, then go over to the IP setting tab. We'll select our serial port that the battery is connected to, and then click read. We can then enter the IP address that we want, then click write. You'll notice that we can't change a network mask or gateway IP, which is strange, but even in a routed network, we don't actually need to configure it. I've seen this before on some equipment, an example being the Microtik SwitchOS interface. The device will just reply to the same IP and MAC address that the request came in from. This workaround is possible since the battery never has to initiate any connections. Another thing you'll notice absent is the ability to change the SNMP community string. Unfortunately, this doesn't seem to be possible right now on the current version of the software. It'll just be stuck at the default of public. The SNMP Tools app also has a real-time monitoring feature like in the PBMS tools, but instead it'll use SNMP to access the battery over the network to see the same stats. ISP Supplies doesn't have an MIB file for this battery, but I was able to use Wireshark to view the SNMP traffic coming out of the software and get the OID numbers being pulled. I could then walk the OID using MIB browser to see most of the info. None of this is labeled, but most of the stuff you'd want to monitor can just be found by comparing the values in the software to the SNMP values. For example, the 5080 number represents the voltage if you were to divide it by 100. There's also a basic web dashboard that dumps most of this info into the browser, so you can take a quick look without having the software running. I popped off the top cover to take a quick look inside and it seems pretty well done from what I can tell. The connectors are all heat shrinked and the wires are managed nicely. The BMS is at the front with a big heatsink and I can see the heating pads around the cells. That's all I had for now and thanks for watching. I'm working on editing another big video that I'm really excited about. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it.